The Aztec Empire was composed of three prominent city-states, Tenochtitlan, Texcoco, and Tlacopan. They inhabited the lands of central Mexico from the late 14th century until their demise at the hands of the Spanish conquistadors in 1521. Although it is unclear where they originated, it is believed that they were a group of hunter-gatherers that split from the Toltec civilization in search of better lands. Under Itzcoatl, the fourth king of Tenochtitlan, the Aztec people became a dominant force and true empire, establishing alliances with neighboring cities and expanding their rule to cover 80,000 square miles. At its peak, the Aztec Empire oversaw nearly 500 small cities and had a population of almost 6 million people. To live in this empire meant being a part of one of the wealthiest and most powerful nations in Mesoamerica. They were a powerful and revered people. But everyday life for the Aztec was hard work, and one's role within the community depended on their social status and gender. Before we learn about the daily lives of the Aztec people, if you're interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. There is much debate surrounding the social structure of the Aztec. What is known is that Aztec society was made up of eight groups which were divided into upper, middle, and lower classes. Rulers, warriors, nobility, priests, and priestesses made up the upper classes. Tradesmen, merchants, farmers, and craftsmen made up the middle class, and slaves primarily made up the lower class. The upper class, known as Pipiltins, lived in larger, sturdy homes constructed using sun-dried bricks. They often had multiple rooms in their homes, one of which would be a dedicated sauna. Bathing was important to the Aztecs, and saunas were believed to clean the body and soul. Saunas were also used to cure diseases. Pipiltin clothes were luxurious and ornately decorated and made from ayate cloth. The more decoration and color someone adorned themselves with, the higher up in social status they were. Men wore loincloths, which they would pair with cloaks. Women wore blouse-like shirts with skirts. In addition, men and women wore necklaces, bracelets, and other ornate jewelry, indicating their wealth. The upper class also often kept slaves and held power in government power or military status. Some even held religious standings as priests. The middle and lower classes were known as masajualis. These men and women made up most of the population of the Aztec people. They lived primarily in huts with thatched roofs of palms. Many were farmers, but some were merchants and artisans. An elite group would become warriors in the Aztec standing army, which was small. Masajuali clothing was typically cotton and very plain, far less decorative than the Pipiltins. All citizens of the Aztec Empire were required to have an education. While there were different types of education for nobles, middle class, males, and females, each path was focused on fostering pride in Aztec culture and heritage. Parents were in charge of educating their children, teaching them basic living skills until they entered their teenage years. When children became teens, middle class youth would be sent to school where girls were taught to sew, weave, and cook, while boys learned the basics of farming or the trades of their fathers. Boys with noble backgrounds attended military schools known as Kalmekak. There, they learned proper running, jumping, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. They were also taught Aztec law, religion, and other civics topics. It was expected that boys of noble backgrounds would hold government positions and become scholars or even priests. Middle-class boys attended Telpakchali, a school dedicated to agricultural topics where they could learn more about farming and crops. All boys were given warrior training to prepare them for military service. While the Aztecs had a small standing army, all needed to be able to fight if it was necessary. Therefore, they were taught about different weapons and how to use them efficiently. If noble boys served in the military, they held positions of rank and power. Girls attended separate schools where they learned how to properly and efficiently run households and care for children. They would also be taught singing, dancing, crafts, and poetry. Women were often viewed as professional crafters and weavers, capable of making beautiful objects. While many worked out of the home, they could also become priestesses, doctors, or sorceresses. When it came to education, topics such as religious rituals, citizenship, and history were considered important for all and were taught to everyone. If students showed a particular knack for these studies, they would likely be picked for additional classes to become ritual healers or priests. Religion was vital to the Aztecs and was the center of their lives and culture. They had many gods, each serving a purpose and representing specific aspects of life. Some of the most important gods were Tezcatlipoca, the creator of the gods, Quetzalcoatl, the creator of humans, and Huitzilopochtli, the god of the sun and war. Sacrifice was also practiced. Typically, prisoners of war would be used as sacrifices, and because of this, war was viewed as a religious obligation. Often, 
wars would be explicitly fought to gather prisoners for sacrifice. These were called Flower Wars. During the Flower War, Tenochtitlan and an enemy state agreed to fight one another. Both sides agreed to a predetermined set of rules. These wars were fought not only to gain sacrifices, but also to train young warriors in combat. The war would end when both sides were satisfied with the number of prisoners they captured. While the upper class held positions of status in the government and religion, the middle class and lower class were primarily farmers, craftsmen, and merchants, with farmers being the more populous group. It was an expansive empire with many mouths to feed. The Aztecs practiced complex farming techniques. A chinampa system kept the soil fertile by using mud dredged and harvested from swamps to help with planting and crop growth. Farmers would place the mud they harvested on rafts made of reed that floated on the water. These rafts were held in place by trees or walls. They also used a terrace system of farming. Cutting into hillsides to create flat farm areas allowed them to utilize more land. Retaining walls were built to keep the fields in place on the hillside. Both practices helped grow beans, squash, nuts, potatoes, tomatoes, chilies, and even chocolate. However, their most commonly grown food was maize, similar to modern-day corn. Maize was versatile and could be made into flour, tortillas, and coarse grain. While lower and middle class diets mainly comprised fruits and vegetables, the upper class often ate meat from fish, ducks, turkey, and even dogs. In addition, insects such as grasshoppers, worms, and ants were also eaten as snacks for their high protein sources. For those who did not farm, becoming a merchant was an option. Selling and trading goods was a good living if one's father practiced a trade. Some merchants even traveled long distances and carried goods back and forth on their backs as the Aztec Empire had no large pack animals. Some Aztec people were skilled craftsmen and worked as metal workers, feather workers, and even potters. Families were often very close-knit. As such, divorce was illegal, but separation was permitted and could be legally obtained in many ways. Marriage, for men, happened around the age of 20, while women were typically in their teens. A matchmaker, usually a family member, would arrange the marriage between two families. Occasionally, a marriage broker would also be called in to oversee the ceremony. In addition, marriages were often used to form political alliances. As such, noble families could only marry into other noble families. There is one aspect of Aztec life, however, that everyone came together to enjoy. The Mesoamerican ball game. This ball game was a sport that was played and practiced throughout ancient Mesoamerica. The Aztecs called it Olamalistli. How and when it began is unknown, but it was extremely popular throughout the region between 1400 and 1600 BC. The game was played on a rectangular court with rubber balls weighing as much as 9 pounds. Two teams would face off against one another. These were usually city versus city matchups. The prevailing theory believes players used only their hips to get the ball through a stone hoop. It was extremely difficult. So difficult that if it happened, the game would be over. The ball was never allowed to touch the ground, and players could not use their hands. In truly skilled matchups, the ball could stay in the air for over an hour without hitting the ground. The origins of the game remain a mystery, but it was played by the early American and Mayan civilizations as well, and the rules are still not completely understood. Archaeologists also believed that the game changed over time. While it always held religious or ritual aspects, later versions seemed to include an element of human sacrifice. Modern versions of the game, now called Ulama, are still played in some indigenous populations throughout the Americas. These matches were sacred to the Aztecs, and if a city's team lost, it was devastating. Sometimes, the games were so politically charged that they would be used as an excuse for an attack or assassination attempt. The Aztec Empire was vast and unique, flourishing in central Mexico for centuries. Unfortunately, with the invasion of the Spanish in 1519, the Aztec Empire fell quickly. Montezuma, the Aztec ruler at the time, thought Hernán Cortés was a god returning to Earth. He welcomed the Spanish into his kingdom. With their superior weaponry and use of horses and dogs in battle, the Spanish used their force and political savvy to turn the Aztecs against one another. Disease spread rapidly, and the empire that took centuries to create tumbled in only two years. A sad fate for a once truly magnificent civilization. The daily life of its citizens very much depended on their social status and gender. How a person dressed, the education they earned, and how they made a living were all dictated by where they fell on the social ladder. Despite these differences, their religion, civic pride, and love of sports were ways their culture bound them to one another. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel. Like the video and leave your suggestions in the comments below.